Hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, week's edition of the Free Thought Forum. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Brian Fields, and with me is my co-host. Uh, you all know uh, Doug Diggins. Also known as Dastardly Doug at times. Thank you for watching the show. Uh, today is Tuesday, September 10th, and uh, this, this is a, a, a interesting week for us. We've got a, a, actually our organization is helping to sponsor a conference uh, this Saturday, and uh, uh, very exciting, and we've been we've been uh, working very hard at it. Uh, it's going to be going on down in Philadelphia near the airport at the uh, NBC Suites, and uh, there there's going to be a whole lot of, of great speakers, and uh, it's it, uh, very excited about it. Um, the uh, uh, there's a website where you'll be able to purchase tickets online still. Uh, it's atheistpa.org. We'll be shutting ticket sales down on that probably sometime tomorrow or, or the day after because we yeah. have to start printing tickets. But uh, Very good, but they can still come and get, get in, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll still sell tickets at the door, and uh, so you should uh, come and, and check us out. Um, anyway, uh, Doug, do you uh, have any news or anything? Uh, I have uh, one of the big stories lately. Um, in the, uh, in the, there were four bloggers in, in Bangladesh who were, were atheists. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of, the, one of the nice things about living here in the United States is you know, usually if we say something offensive <coughs> to any particular religion, we don't usually end up in jail, although some people have been known to be injured, <laughs> injured or very angry with us. But uh, 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 in Bangladesh, actually, four atheist bloggers have been thrown into jail. And actually, they, they were recently charged with uh, defaming Islam. Uh, and they're facing up to seven years in jail. Uh, at, they were charged in court last Sunday, and uh, uh, they essentially the, the there's there's a whole bunch of Islamic groups out there that are are demanding their execution. Yeah, and it's, a, it's a serious offense uh, out there, and it really makes uh, us thankful here um, for our freedom of and freedom from. Uh, religion and or more, more precisely, freedom from Islam, yeah. uh, if we so choose. Well, and yeah, well, Christian Christianity historically, especially in Europe. I mean, we know uh, in 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 the 1500s, 1600s. Mm -hmm. You know, you you could you could uh, uh, be executed for blasphemy as well. Yeah. Nowadays, I mean, part of the founding of this country, obviously, is the idea that you can't be. Uh, uh, you can say you, you can profess whatever belief uh, you wish mm -hmm. uh, without any kind of fear of, of any kind of retribution, at least legally, uh, with, of course, obvious certain exceptions. But, but look at the, uh, Galileo Galilee uh, yeah. uh, here. I mean, uh, all he was doing is making celestial observations right. that, and observed uh, that, hey, it doesn't really look like Earth is the center of the universe. Uh, uh, here and I guess there was uh, initially an attempt to uh, you know put him to death because of it, but uh, he was I guess the nice word is sequestered uh, for quite a while. Right. And it's only just recently, uh, what was it, a year or two ago, where the uh, the the Pope actually apologized. Uh, to Galileo, which I thought was a little bit late. But. Uh, too little, too late. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 insane. They, uh, um, uh, I, I, I cannot. I mean, today it's hard to envision uh, living under that kind of uh, restrictions, where where you really have to be so careful about what you say that if you offend the wrong religious figure, that you're you're going to end up in jail. But I mean, it's it's. 
it, it's a tragedy that even today, you know, in, in 2013, uh, this month, that these bloggers are being charged with defaming an idea. You know, it's one thing to defame a person. A person is, is a tangible thing. If you say something, you know, lies about a person, yeah, okay, that can harm a person. There's actual harm. You can go to jail, for, or you, you can, I'm sorry, you can be sued for that. And there's that's, legal recourse. Yes, there's legal yeah. recourse. But to defame an idea, I mean, imagine, if you will, the, the, the realm of ideas we're talking about here. Uh, you know, if, if a Democrat said something nasty about a Republican, or a Republican said something nasty about a Democrat, and that idea of what that party is mm -hmm. became something that could be, uh, that you could be thrown in jail for. And then, but that's accepted as normal in certain cultures when it comes to religion. Yeah. You know, and uh, I, it shortcuts the marketplace of, of, of ideas and thought. It, it, it's one of those things that religion uses to uh, censor, to censor and, and, and reinforce itself. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it allows religion a special place in the marketplace of ideas, that which you cannot criticize. And that's why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, there's. Uh, uh, it's it's unfortunate to hear about this, and it's something that uh, you know there have been protests and such uh, around the world uh, about this. Uh, but it, it's it's really disappointing. And there, there are uh, in Bangladesh there have been uh, uh, other people that I uh, there was a speaker at, at one of our at a conference I regularly attend who was actually banished from the country for for speaking out against Islam. Uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, well, anyway, um, it, so it's not uncommon. It does uh, happen. W w was she a speaker at one of? Uh, American uh, Atheist has had her on frequently. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She's very uh, tall, thin, uh, attractive, young. Uh, oh, she's older. This one's yeah. older. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I just I don't remember her name. I'm blanking. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's 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 very unfortunate that. Uh, uh, that happens, and um, but you know, on on a lighter note, um, I ha have a report that was put online recently from Think Progress. Uh, as more young Americans are using birth control, teen births have hit a new record low. Yeah, imagine that. You know, Gee, how strange. I I really thought that. It was, you know, due to prayer, but an um, abstinence, you know, an abstinence, abstinence yeah. only. Yeah, no, it, honestly, this thing called science that we can use to, you know, control things where we think are are negative socially, like teen births, people who are are not ready to be <coughs> parents, mm -hmm. are teenagers. They have all kinds of hormones going on, you know, and but we expect that as parents that we can just point a finger and say, oh, don't have sex, and that's going to completely override the uh, the, the the nature of uh, the hormones that, that teenagers are going uh, yeah, through. Yeah, well, it worked for me, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, it, it, it's, it's, you know, there's hard science that, that can be shown here to, to say, look, the birth rates are going down. The prevalence of birth control is going up, and this is a good thing on a planet that uh, uh, is having so much trouble with overpopulation and so on and so forth. You know? And really, limited resources. Yeah, I mean, there's a potential there uh, to, uh, in, in, the, in regard to food, that we, we could be growing uh, food for the multitudes. Uh, and everything, but that in itself is another problem. Uh. Exactly, and uh, so yeah, we. Uh, uh, so it, it, it's just interesting to note that um, that that they uh, uh, that the numbers are out, and uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm uh, multitasking here a moment. I was pulling up another article, but. Uh, and my tablet is not responding very well. Um, I, I would like to remind everybody who's watching, if you're watching, this is a call-in show. If you hear about any of the topics uh, 
uh, on this program and you would like to discuss them, uh, the number is up on your screen right now. Then it is 717-846-5067. Uh, it, please call in and talk to us. We, we'd, we'd love to chat with you. And uh, also remember uh, that there is a seven second delay between what you hear on the television and what you might hear through your, uh, your telephone. So uh, if you give us a call and you say, hello, am I on the air? You will not hear what you said over your television. Uh, for seven seconds and that will confuse the heck out of you so always uh, turn down the volume on your TV so you you don't get confused and it is confusing uh, with having that delay yeah I, I, I've been there uh, it, it's it's much easier to be on this side of the conversation oh yes <laughs> yeah, yes but uh, uh, anyway we uh, uh, so do you have anything uh, uh, on your uh, uh, list of things to talk about today? Uh, well, you, you actually kind of reminded me uh, of something when you were talking about the, uh, uh, the punishment uh, of, uh, in different countries of different religion. And uh, yeah, it's, it's maybe just slightly off, um, off religion. Uh, and if you want, but it's a totally true story. Um, when I, uh, I think I was like about seven or eight years old, my parents moved out to the Middle East, to the Persian Gulf. And, uh, you know, I was an inquisitive, uh, let's put it this way, uh, uh, young lad. You know, I, I had to see how everything worked. What, uh, um, I'd discover uh, everything and there was this uh, gentleman uh, I guess Muslim uh, walking down uh, this like dirt road with these camels and I don't really remember exactly what the heck he had but also um, he, his wife was walking uh, behind him and she was wearing a, a veil well, you know, I'd never seen someone with a veil. Uh, so, being a dummy, like <laughs> that, I, I just walked over to her, and you know, I just sort of smiled, and I just reached up, and I just sort of went to look underneath, with which the, uh, I guess her husband, went totally banana wackies and started yelling something to me in uh, whatever language uh, it was. And I immediately took off, and I was probably about you know, half a mile from my house. I ran uh, back to my house. Uh, I could run faster uh, than him. Uh, and opened the door, ran on in. Now, the, the funny thing was, well, now it's funny, was that the, the gentleman, uh, the Arab, he actually knocked on the door of a house. And my mother came to the door and uh, you know, I asked him, what is the matter? And he spoke English. And he uh, requested that uh, she send me out like that because he had defamed his uh, his wife or insulted somehow anyway and he thought that he had the right to slit my throat and uh, <laughs> at that time no matter uh, what I had done in the past you know, I was uh, thinking to myself oh please 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 mum don't just you know don't sell me out don't send me out out there, but he he respected uh, my parents' house. He did not come in, but he requested that I be sent out uh, so he could execute me. Now, obviously, it must have been uh, you know something to do with his religion. Uh, the only the short. Uh, Part of the story is that my father happened to know 
uh, one of the local shahs uh, and uh, made a phone call and the guy waited there uh, for about 10, 15 minutes in this great big mile long stretch limo um, pulled up uh, in front and he got out and I guess he spoke to the uh, uh, the Arab and explained that I was a, a dumb limey kid that uh, didn't know it and please forgive uh, me and um, that I had to uh, go out and apologize to both uh, him and to uh, his wife and he left but the thought the thought that he thought that he had the right uh, to um, end my life just for, for peeking at his wife's uh, face uh, it, it, I don't know uh, whether or not it uh, was, you know, religiously uh, uh, motivated or, or old customs uh, or everything, but, oh, so, uh, you know, I, it, it's something, even though I was young, I, it, it, it seemed so fresh in my mind uh, <laughs> that I thought how close to death that I had uh, come at that time. It's so, absolutely insane. Oh, oh that, I'll tell you one other thing. I was uh, a little fact. Uh, over the weekend, uh, l listening to uh, all the, uh, the the news coverage and everything that they've got with you know what's going on in, in Syria uh, and everything, um, they what was it? It was uh, what is it? C-SPAN. Fox News and, and someone else were, 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 of course, doing their usual polls. And uh, they, it was interesting that they found two things, that the number of people that were praying for peace, presumably, you know, like Miss America, we were praying for world peace, uh, but they were praying for peace and expected that their God was going to deliver. On the other hand, they found that the ev a lot of evangelicals were not praying for peace. What they were praying for was the actual start of Armageddon. Uh, uh, so, you know, d Jesus would come back. And it just struck me as kind of uh, funny that, uh, you know, here in these troubling times out there, uh, you have uh, two sets of people that both believe in the same uh, God, uh, presumably, and uh, one wants to uh, stick around uh, a little bit and have world peace, and the other wants to promote uh, world war so Jesus will come uh, back you, you know you, you just can't get two people to agree on uh, on anything or any two religions yeah well and that's a that's actually a scary notion uh, that that's pretty common in in many evangelical circles mm -hmm. uh, the idea that uh, it, it's frightening that that it's actually common in um, <clears throat> in some evangelical politicians as well, the idea that you know it doesn't matter really what happens here on earth because God's coming back anyway. Mm -hmm. So let's push for Mid East conflict because that's going to that's going to trigger the events of Revelations, and that's going to uh, yeah that's it's it, that's one of those things that that. Uh, actually does scare me. You know, when people talk about, well, why do you get involved so much in, um, in activism and, and, and all that other stuff, it's because there are people like that that mm -hmm. are considered otherwise sane people mm -hmm. doing these crazy things. That want to precipitate. I mean, if I turned around uh, and said, hey, you know, I wish that we had a good thermonuclear war Hey, that would wipe out, uh, you know, four billion people on the place of the, uh, the the planet. Hey, 
you'd look at me and say, God, you are really, really uh, strange here. You know, you, or should. You, you, yeah, <laughs> uh, you, you need uh, mental health. But um, an evangelical can just leave out the word thermonuclear and just say we want to uh, see another world uh, uh, war that would uh, wipe out all the bad people and the good people we left, which is just semantics, uh, saying basically the same, excuse me, the same uh, cotton picking thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know, it's, it, it really makes me wonder why the heck, um, th th their presumption that they are going to be amongst the people that are accepted into heaven, it's, uh, it's just plain arrogance. Well, it's arrogance and it's idiocy too. I mean, yeah. you, you, okay, so for example, the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, claim that they follow the Bible strictly and that 144,000 people mm -hmm. are going to go to heaven and they're going to live there and, and that's going to be great. But there are over, I believe the count I last saw was 6 million Jehovah's Witnesses. You know, so someone's going to be disappointed. <laughs> Many people are. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, along with a lot of Catholics too. One of our uh, uh, speakers that is coming to the conference. I was looking for this article, and finally, I, I managed to <coughs> get my technology to work. Um, his name's J.T. Everhard, but he posted a uh, oh, yeah. uh, an article today about a pastor caught having sex with young boys claims he was curing them of homosexuality. <laughs> Hair of the dog, so to speak. That's right, my friends. <laughs> this pastor claims to have a magic penis yeah. that will cure these young boys of their homosexuality, them of their homosexuality. Now, the pastor, of course, is obviously a pedophile, and, but uh, having gay sex with underage boys is going to help them achieve sexual and moral purity. Um, okay. This was the other article I was going to talk about Must today. Must wash himself up afterwards with holy water. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, there's a lot that could be said about that. But uh, speaking of talking about anything we've uh, talked about today, like I said, this is a call-in show, and don't forget uh, the, uh, the number at some point, there it is, it's going to be on your screen, 717-846-5067, uh, it's hard to see it from here, um, but uh, 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 please call in, we'd, we'd, we'd love to talk with you. Um, now also, uh, you know, if you're one of these people that really just wants to sit and watch and doesn't want to call in and be part of the program or you feel nervous um, uh, about it, you can also uh, email us a, uh, a question and uh, we'll answer it on uh, one of the next uh, shows. Um, we will not disclose your, uh, your identity or any personal information uh, about you whatsoever unless you, you know, want to be and you request uh, to be, but uh, there's also the uh, email ad address is on your uh, screen, uh, is uh, askanatheist, P-A-N, at gmail.com. And you can see that's all one uh, word. And we, we check it about once a week uh, to see, um, you know, what we get. And any uh, questions that you submit, we will answer on the air. If you want a, uh, an answer over the, uh, you know, e email back to you, we'll give you that too. And uh, th th there's two sorts of answers that you may or may not get, okay? The first that you get, uh, could get, uh, is a, 
a personal opinion from the person that's reading the question that does not necessarily represent um, any position uh, that Pan may have and does not endorse. And uh, there are other answers um, that would be, uh, what's the way I'm looking to uh, explain this? Uh, well, one, one thing to keep in mind is atheists, uh, the, the only thing that atheists really agree on, uh, or at least wholeheartedly, is the idea that we don't believe in God. Uh, so if a question kind of strays outside the realm of that question, uh, we, we have different, you know, just a, a variety of, of people with different viewpoints. And so you should always expect when you get an answer from an atheist that it may or may not be representative of all of us. And uh, mm. it, it's just something that, that goes with the territory, any group. You know, if you look at Christians, if you ask a Christian about something other than Jesus dying on the cross and raising for your sins, after the laugh uh, from anybody else, you're, you're probably going to... Uh, get a different answer on that topic depending on that person's yeah. background or personal opinion. You get a personal opinion uh, rather than necessarily a position statement from an organization. Right. Now, um, I have another story here. Uh, last week, uh, there was a, a, a bunch of announcements about the under God in the, the, the Massachusetts uh, uh, State Supreme Court is taking on the under God question. Uh, in the Pledge of Allegiance, there's been a challenge to it there. I didn't um, see that. Um, and uh, it, it, it made the round on Fox News. And oh, Fox, I guess why. Well, it made the round elsewhere, too. Yeah. But, you know, Fox News, uh, Dana Perino uh, complained last week, uh, and she said the following when, when they were talking about this, this case. Uh, I'm tired of them, Petrino. Uh, I remember working at the Justice Department years ago when I first started right after 9-11 and a lawsuit like this came through. And before the day had finished, the United States Senate and the House of Representatives have both passed resolutions saying they were keeping under God in the pledge. If these people really don't like it, they don't have to live here, she added. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point, co-host Bob Beckel agreed. If you don't believe, then why do you care? It's just like some guy's name. Mm -hmm. Now, um, to get the atheist viewpoint on this, and I'm going to say that this is uh, pretty close to most atheists, uh, there, there may be a few exceptions, but you know, given our earlier disclaimer, most atheists would agree with this. There's a very good reason why we have a problem with under God and the pledge. Uh, take a look at the Pledge of Allegiance. When, it, when, you, when you talk about, when you get to that phrase, you say, one nation under God indivisible. Now the original pledge said one nation indivisible. Yes. I which remember. is uh, a perfectly reasonable statement. It's a statement of coming together. It's one of those things where we say we are one nation <laughs> and we are indivisible. It doesn't matter whether you are religious or not religious or what particular religion you have or what particular race you are. It, it, it is, we are one. We are one nation. Yeah. Indivisible. E pluribus unum. Now, when you take the, the phrase under God and you insert that into the pledge, now you are saying one nation under God, now we're creating a division. Mm -hmm. If you believe in God and you believe that this is a Christian nation, then under God is perfectly reasonable. But now you've got on the other side of that coin where you have atheists and anybody who believes in the separation of church and state including religious people, who look at under God and see, wait a second, this isn't right. If, I, if people don't believe in God, then they are separate from me and they are not part of this nation. And that's something that, that uh, is pretty, <clears throat> it, it might be something that you look at as, as a believer and say, oh, I don't have a problem with that. But if you look at the, the principles this nation was actually founded on, it creates a, a, a serious concern about what the status is of an atheist in this country. In, in the 90s, <coughs> excuse me, President uh, uh, George H.W. Bush famously said that, that atheists were not 
uh, citizens yeah. of this country and, and uh, shouldn't, should, should, should not be considered should citizens. not be considered citizens of this country. Yeah. I mean, this is the mentality we're talking about. You know, we are members of this country by the same virtue of, of, of or uh, citizens of this country by the same virtue as everybody else in this country, uh, Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, Christian. Every yeah. single person in this country who is a citizen should have that just assumed that the citizenship, one, one, you know, once you are a citizen, you shouldn't have the citizenship question by matter of belief. And that's what the separation of church, church and state is all about. It's about making sure that we as uh, believers and non-believers alike are all part of this country. And uh, so it, it, it's a, a, of serious concern to us that uh, it, it's not just a simple statement like it, it, it's played up by uh, certain right-wing media uh, that, oh, well, we're all together. Well, no, we're not. If you're going to put under God in there, you're going to say that everybody except the atheists are together. And that's not right. It's not morally right, and it's not legally right uh, with the First Amendment. And so it, it is of great concern to us, and, and it should be of great concern to everybody, we would think. Um, if if atheists can be singled out, and, and the reason they were singled out in this manner was back in 1954, which is when Under God was inserted into the official pledge. Um, when that happened, we were in the midst of the communist Red Scare. Yes, the godless. Uh, the godless uh, communists. Yes. And the politicians <laughs> of the time wanted to draw a big line and say, okay, the communists are godless and therefore the United States should be religious and that's a way to create an othering of people. That is to create two groups where one group is the in crowd and one group is the out crowd and the in crowd can look at the out crowd and say they are less than human. They are not the same as me and therefore I can say and think whatever I like about them and it's perfectly okay to go to war with them. It's perfectly okay to kill them. It's, that's fine mm -hmm. and that's wrong. <laughs> that that is that is what what the main issue is with that and uh, uh, for 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 Ms. Perino to say that on Fox News, uh, which while many of my friends, I, I personally I'm I would consider myself a liberal and I have many liberal friends, but not all atheists are liberals and and not all atheists are any one particular political realm. Remember I explained earlier, it's the the divisions are are just as ver varied as you're going to see elsewhere. But a certain segment of the population will primarily watch Fox News, and they will see these people on the television saying what is essentially a bigoted and uh, separative remark like that and think, oh, yeah, it's perfectly okay to say that atheists are other than Americans. And that's considered, and in, in even today, that's considered to be uh, a legitimate uh, statement, a legitimate moral statement. And while it is a legal statement, the First Amendment allows us to say whatever we like, even if it is bigoted, um, it's, it's a wrong statement. And uh, Well, I mean, y you, you shouldn't even uh, really use the, the, the word citizen if you are a legal resident of the United States, as I was back uh, when I, I came here in 1959, okay, and I got my, my green card, I uh, immigrated legally. Yeah, this guy's a bloody limey in case you didn't yeah, know. Yeah, in case you hadn't uh, figured out by the uh, New Jersey accent here. here. <laughs> <laughs> but in 1962, while still uh, as uh, an alien, I enlisted uh, in the United States Army. Now, but I, enl I enlisted as an atheist. And I can assure you that uh, there were other atheists in foxholes uh, here, regardless of what uh, anyone else may uh, say. So uh, it's a question of uh, you know, um, are you patriotic? I saw a, uh, a question uh, once. Uh, do atheists consider themselves to be patriotic? 
Well, heck yeah. I mean, uh, if I wasn't patriotic, um, I would have just moved up to, uh, to Canada. I would say that fighting for the separation of church and state is one of the most purely patriotic things you can do. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the first uh, amendment to our Constitution. It, it's been around, at, you know, just slightly after the introduction of the Constitution. It's as long as it's been around, and the concept of the separation of church and state was, was uh, something that the founders strongly believed in. And, and I, I get very upset when I hear religious people talk about this being a Christian nation because that is a bastardization of yeah. the founding fathers' ideas about how government should run and how citizens and, and, or, or residents of the country should interact. But you know? see, I mean, it didn't even really start uh, with um, our uh, United States Constitution. Uh, it, it started back uh, as the states were forming. Virginia, uh, long before uh, and Pennsylvania, they signed it. yeah, and Pennsylvania and, and had Pennsylvania. a very strong uh, religious uh, freedom uh, mentality. Yeah, and you know they had the same thing there: uh, freedom from and of. Uh, religion, the separation of church and state was one of the prime things. This wasn't something that they just thought of at the, at the last cotton picking minute. Right. Uh, um, uh, there and they go, oh, we'll, we'll throw that uh, in. That was hotly debated for many, many years, and people with very, very uh, sensible uh, heads said, no, this we have to include. Uh, in the uh, the major law documents of our country, uh, you know, of the it, United it, States. It was very funny that the uh, the idea, you know, the idea people have today about the First Amendment and how it came about and what the debate was over the First Amendment. Uh, it was not about whether the country should be more religious or have more freedom for religion to intersect with government. The question was whether the government should establish laws to limit freedoms mm -hmm. uh, uh, or not. Uh, the, the, it, it was more on the idea of, you know, if you specify the First Amendment, well, does that mean that there aren't other freedoms, you know, mm -hmm. that, that these enumerated freedoms and these enumerated rights are the only rights that we have? And, you know, legal scholars will tell you that eventually they came down on the side of no, the rights that are outlined in the Constitution are not uh, solely inclusive. Uh, they're not the only rights we have. They're the only rights that are uh, protected by law. But yeah. we have all sorts of natural rights. And of course, that comes out of the Enlightenment, the idea of a natural right. The, the, because you live, you have this right. Not because it was granted by God, not by, because it was granted by the government. It's because you have this particular right just by being a human being. Mm -hmm. And this concept is, is you know, it, it was uh, uh, something, I, I think it was Locke, I think was, was uh, John Locke, um, yeah. uh, who, who uh, uh, talked about natural rights. and. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the founders of this country were, were, were big fans <laughs> of, mm -hmm. of Locke's philosophy and other, philo and other Enlightenment philosophers. And uh, so, you know, what people see today is a, a, is, is a bastardization, like I said, of that particular idea. It's, it's a... Um, uh, it's, it's wrong. <laughs> it's yeah. When you look back at uh, the the religions and the uh, the kings and uh, queens of Europe, uh, as an example, it, it they were always trying to jump in and you uh, and usurp power from each other, and it was a constant battle back and forth for a short while. Uh, you know, the, 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 the king and his court would uh, uh, be reigning over uh, re religion, and then religion would say, no, 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 uh, hey, we'll kick you out of the, uh, the church unless you uh, uh, abide by our rules. And they, well, okay, look, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll kowtow uh, a little bit uh, here, 
but you know that that shouldn't be the neither one has the right uh, to uh, to govern the uh, the other the only uh, right that uh, mankind has is to uh, basically live his own uh, life as he sees fit provided that it is uh, within the community accepted norms and community accepted laws. See, I don't, I don't think I, I, I agree with that necessarily. I think that, that, you know, well, first of all, you know, I would say that strictly speaking, humans have no rights that they don't claim for themselves. You know, uh, yeah. uh, they, 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 they there's, <coughs> the rights are a human concept. They, they, they come from human thinking, human philosophy, and the things that we kind of agree that this is how we're going to live. But by the same token, um, if we agree that there's any kind of concept of rights, there are individual rights that trump community standards. I think I don't think community standards should limit rights, and and that that comes back to, you know, I was talking about the birth control stuff earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, things like that. Okay, well, if the community says, you know, you shouldn't use birth control, well, that shouldn't trump an individual's right to do with their body what they like. And I personally, my personal opinion is, and this isn't, again, a global opinion, my personal opinion is that a person has a sovereign right to their own body, that yes. to, to, to do with their body as they wish. And, and I think that that right, that most other rights that you can imagine, you know, to, mm -hmm. to th that exist, come from that right. I have a sovereign right to my body. Now you can say, you can extend from that right and say, I have a sovereign right to my property. Well, then you get ideas like don't steal, you know, don't uh, damage someone else's property. Don't, you know. Uh, it's a social contract. Yes. So, but the basic social contract, I think, starts with my body is mine, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, so, uh, the, you know, don't kill, don't hurt, don't rape, don't, uh, uh, don't tell people they can't have an abortion. Well, that's, you know? what I, that's what I meant to say before you started to grossly distort my words, but yes, I agree with you. Uh, 100%, that is what I mean. Uh, what I uh, uh, meant to say not so eloquently uh, <laughs> here, um, uh, there are some certain uh, community standards, if you want, but you have to also agree to that. But the community standards um, should not be punitive. They should not uh, hurt the people uh, that they're trying to uh, govern, uh, well, um, yeah. if you will. I mean, if the uh, community turned around uh, to me and said, OK, thou shalt not use uh, uh, birth control. Mm -hmm. And here it is. My my wife was on her sixth child. Um, th that would be punitive. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, but I I I, I <coughs> personally I I extend that right, and and you know this is again is my personal opinion, but I extend that to, for example, the war on drugs. You know, yeah. I I think the war on drugs is immoral. The reason I think it is immoral is because I think I have a son. Now I don't do drugs. I don't have a desire to do drugs. I don't. Mm -hmm. It's just not something I want to do. But I think that people should have the right to choose what they do with their bodies. So if someone wants to take drugs, and is an adult and is perfectly conscious of what the drugs they are taking and putting in their own body, and the consequences that result of misusing those drugs. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. Somebody who takes drugs and goes out in a car and kills somebody should be res held responsible for their actions. Same, same with it, alcohol. Same with alcohol. Yeah, exactly. I'm um, say, but, you can but you can choose to drink, but you can't choose to take uh, drugs. And when, when What do you uh, mean you can't choose to take drugs? Well, I mean, if, if I turn around and say, hey, I want to take, I want to go smoke a, um, a, a joint. Yeah. Oh, but, you're saying legally you can't uh, choose. Uh, legally, I can't uh, right. do that. And I think that's morally wrong. Yeah. My opinion is that that's morally wrong. And I think I, I do think that many atheists share that opinion with me, uh, but uh, not all do. And uh, uh, I agree with you. Yeah, uh, but I but I think that if 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 rights extend from anything, 
they 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 have to start with what is the the idea of the individual and and what is the individual's rights within a society and and I I agree that there are some some things uh, with the social contract that you have to agree by in order to get along with other people but I think that one thing one thing that that always should be considered excuse me is that those rights are never to be trumped by um, by what those individual rights shouldn't be trumped by you know the whim of society uh, the you, you know things like gay marriage for example you know yeah. it doesn't hurt a uh, uh, it, it doesn't hurt a religious believer if if two gay people get married mm -hmm. you know or three or three straight people or you know whatever it, it that doesn't hurt somebody else um, well, they might say, oh, yes, but it, it, it could hurt the children. Um, Which but doesn't bear out in, in, in any no. kind of, uh, in, in any studies that have been done. You know, th here's, here's the thing that, that may uh, uh, freak some people out, but, you know, the, in, when surveys are done of, of, of homosexual couples, believe it or not, statistically, homosexual couples are, are usually uh, more financially stable than the average population. Mm -hmm. And uh, that they they have so they have the means the resources uh, if they're in a stable relationship and and people who are in a stable relationship are the ones that want to get married people who people don't typically want to get married if they're not in a stable relationship you know what I mean yeah. and uh, I don't think that marriage is necessarily about kids anymore um, no, I sort of drifted away from uh, yeah. that. Uh, it's it's more today uh, about uh, the, the the benefits. You know, um, can you go and visit um, your person, uh, your, your spouse, your, your, in the your partner in the uh, the hospital? So, oh no, no, no! You you know you're not uh, that, uh, married, but you know, okay, that's my partner. I should be allowed. And I go, mm -hmm. No, no, sorry, only family. So you know. Where do you suddenly go from, uh, you know, like common law uh, to not family? And there are actually, I mean, just so you know, there are two uh, laws that are kind of stalled in committee right now uh, in the Pennsylvania State House. One is for uh, legalizing gay marriage, and the other one is for uh, extending uh, discrimination rights to, to homosexuals. Mm -hmm. um, and they both kind of stalled, uh, unfortunately, at least as far as I understand. Um, I don't know if that's changed recently. I've been working on some other stuff, but uh, uh, but recently the IRS has uh, decided to recognize the marital status of people regardless of where they live. And now what that means is, if you get married in say, it, uh, in I think what New I think New York has gay marriage right now. So I'm going to use them as an example. If you get married in New York and you move to Pennsylvania, where gay marriage is not currently legal, you can still file your federal tax returns as a married couple, mm -hmm. uh, even though Pennsylvania doesn't recognize the marriage. That's nice. Yeah. The, the, and so benefits, federal benefits are being extended to include uh, anybody who is legally married, regardless of where the origin and, and uh, as long as the origin, I assume, it doesn't matter where the origin of the marriage is, as long as you got married, and what, and it doesn't matter whether the state recognizes that marriage or not. It's slowly going in the in the right direction. There's you know a little bit of course changes here and there, but the tack is primarily uh, toward uh, what is right. You know, I, I've I've gotten into arguments about with with other atheists before, uh, so, and some uh, and other people before. Uh, I strongly believe that the the course that, as you said, the course of history tends toward the progressive. I think Martin Luther King said it too. Uh, the course of the pro, pro, you know, as we as we as a species grow older, mm -hmm. our morality matures. Yes. Um, so, and I I think <clears throat> that uh, morality is not static. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Morality matures. You know, we, we see all kinds of uh, what we would consider immoral today. Things change. Uh, 
you know, women didn't have the right to vote. You have uh, things like uh, we don't have slavery anymore. You know, women uh, were stoned for yeah. adultery, uh, and not in a good way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so th the point is that we decide as a society that you know we want to come up with the best way to interact with each other, and we do this through laws and and uh, a slow adjustment of. Uh, what we consider to be moral. And I, you know, if I were to have faith in anything, I do have faith in the idea that, that morality progresses. And now I, I don't have enough faith in it, in that idea that I won't be an activist. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, you know, can't well, the leave. second you rest, uh, yeah. it will overtake you. Right. But uh, I do, but I do have some faith in the idea that, that you know, human beings are, uh, intrinsically have worked out that it's better to get along with each other than to fight with each other. Mm -hmm. And so that that inborn desire to try and get along, I think, uh, pushes us to be more moral as time goes mm -hmm. on. Um, we're, uh, we, we are coming up on, uh, I think, a little less than 10 minutes in the program la yet. If you've been watching and would like to call in and comment, uh, please feel free to do so. Uh, we're, we're not going to be able to take calls too much longer, so uh, please uh, uh, get it get it in now or forever hold your peace, mm -hmm. um, or at least for two weeks. Or uh, whatever else you want to hold. Yeah, well, at least for the next two weeks. Been a warning. Been a warning. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway. Any ask <laughs> Uh, do you uh, I, um, I'm sorry, I don't uh, have it with me. Uh, uh, our producer's asking us if we have any Ask an Atheist questions for, for those watching and are confused by Doug's talking into the ether. Yes, true. <laughs> That's because my head's in the ether. Oh, let me just tell you one thing that uh, related to prayer. Um, real quickly, I believe it was on Saturday. I. Uh, I like to watch uh, a, a little bit of uh, of NASCAR, okay? Uh, only for the, uh, the the carnage and uh, the, the wrecks and everything. But scratch what I said about humans being more moral. Yeah, but, but, uh, but seeing as uh, no one really ever gets hurt anymore, uh, you know, you, you can 200 mile an hour into a wall and they walk away with uh, you know broken fingernail there. Uh, but I flipped on. Uh, NASCAR, and first thing I heard was, uh, yes, and we asked Jesus to show, and I'm going, oh, flip, I don't want to listen to Jesus' prayers. And I flipped all the way through the channels, okay, came back, and the guy said, and we asked for uh, this in Jesus' name, in his name. I've got click, 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 and go through, search through the channels again. I did this four times, and he's still rattling on about Jesus, like that, and wanting it in his name. And they showed some of the people in the crowd, like that, and except for the drivers, no one was bowing their heads uh, uh, and everything. I mean, what about all the poor uh, people out there, the, the Jews that are out there that don't particularly uh, believe in Jesus? Uh, what about the Muslims? What about everyone uh, else? And I thought it was very presumptuous uh, of them uh, to come up with the, the, the Jesus prayer uh, at a time where uh, it was you know, multi-denominational uh, uh, was watching. Well, I think we've got a long way to go to convince NASCAR to uh, uh, give up on the religious aspect. Also, the government in uh, Harrisburg, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's another story. So, have uh, you got anything else uh, on the uh, on the interwebs? Uh, uh, no, I don't. But uh, I do want to circle back. I have uh, just I can talk a little bit more about the conference this weekend. Yeah, that's what I meant. Um, we have uh, we have a great lineup of speakers coming out, and uh, I, I think uh, they're well worth watching. Uh, we've got. Uh, uh, on our website, uh, atheistpa.org, if you go to the speakers tab, we've got 
Debbie Allen, Seth Andrews, Jamila Bay, Rob Boston, Representative Mark Cohen from Philadelphia. We've got James Croft. We've got uh, Dave DeLuca, Jerry DeWitt, J.T. Eberhard, Fred Edwards, Sean Faircloth, Rebecca Hale, Steve Hill, George Robb, A.J. Johnson, Jennifer Kalmanson, Amanda Kniff, uh, Lori Lebo, Tracy Lockwood, Teresa McBain, Hugh Taft Morales, Joe Nickel, Edwina Rogers, Shelley Siegel, Dave Silverman, Herb Silverman, Jamie Ian Swiss, Dave Tamayo, and Dr. Joe Wenke. That's quite a lineup. Yeah, it's a, it's a yeah. fantastic lineup. And, uh, you know, they're going to have a lot of fun things to talk about. And uh, we've got entertainment uh, Saturday evening as well. We have two comedians and a, and a, a musician. Um, so that should be a lot of fun. Do you say musician or magician? We have well Friday night we have a magician. Okay. Well he does he he would prefer he's going to be doing an amazing performance. Does he uh, make uh, like religious people disappear? Uh, uh, unfortunately, no. I don't think he's worked that one out. Oh, no, okay. I'm just joking. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, no, he uh, that we so Friday night there's a magician although he will be emceeing our event Saturday night. During the day, we have George Robb doing a performance on Saturday, and then we have uh, mm. Steve Hill and Dave DeLuca doing comedy, and then uh, mm. Shelley Siegel, who's a wonderful, wonderful uh, folk musician, uh, uh, doing our, our closing out the, the, the day Saturday. Uh, mention some of the organizers and the people behind the scenes. Oh, too. yeah. Well, we've got, uh, uh, I've been working with uh, uh, Scott Rhodes, uh, Margaret Downey. Scott Rhodes uh, runs the uh, Free Thoughts, uh, Lancaster Free Thought Society. Margaret Downey runs the, three, the Free Thought Society in Philadelphia. And uh, Stax Rosh runs uh, the Philly Corps in Philadelphia. That's a, a Phil Philadelphia Coalition of Reason. It's a it's a bunch of groups that are that work together generally in in a large area. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he organizes for that. And so the four of us have been working for these these months to pull this together. Guaranteed, he has <laughs> working his butt off. Um, we also have some wonderful, wonderful uh, 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 my uh, sponsors. And the, uh, the firewall here at, in the studio just messed yeah. with me a little bit. Uh, but we have some or wonderful organizations sponsoring this. Uh, the Free Thought Society, uh, Pennsylvania Nonbelievers, which is our organization, Lancaster Free Thought Society, American Atheists, the CSI, Steel, C Steel City Skeptics, uh, JREF, Philly Corps, Pittsburgh Corps, American Humanist Association. The Nittany Free Thought Society, the Humanists of Center County, uh, the PSU AAA, the NEPA Free Thought Society, and the Secular Coalition for America. Uh, I also do co-chair uh, the Secular Coalition for America's Pennsylvania chapter as well. Uh, and uh, they're wonderful. Well, all of these are wonderful organizations, and they've been working with us, uh, uh, giving us uh, support, and uh, we really appreciate that. Can you mention any uh, of the? Uh the, the tables or anything uh, of the people that are going to be around? Uh, well, most of those organizations will have tables at the conference, and mm -hmm. then we also have uh, the, the Secular Party of, uh, of America is having a table. We've got uh, uh, Evolve Fish will be there. If you've um, ever, you know, they've got the world's greatest t shirts. If, if you can't find uh, something on one of their t shirts, then you haven't been looking hard enough. <laughs> they, they literally have got. Thousands upon thousands. Uh, we have, uh, 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 let's see here, we have We Are Atheism, which is a wonderful organization that uh, helps give exposure to atheists as human beings. And it shows, you know, it, they, they're, they're working on telling our stories. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're, they're a wonderful group. Uh, let's see here, those are the ones that come to the top of my head. Uh, Pennsylvania Nonbelievers will be there. Uh, you can stop by and say hi. Mm -hmm. I think we're wrapping up on time, so yeah. uh, check out the uh, next show. Uh, we'll be in two weeks, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you there.